we are at where else? The hashtag Cameron Resign protest outside Downing Street. It's Saturday. I'm Aaron Bastani. If I look tired, that's because you know what? I was so excited about this protest all night. I couldn't sleep. You know, I just kept on trawling the hashtag Cameron Resign. So this chap up here, the Apple Letters Orange, they gather intelligence on people. Not really surprising in a surveillance state. Interesting though, isn't it, that somebody can operate with carte blanche, their dad's will can be in Jersey, they can have offshore assets which aren't subject to any kind of public oversight, yet the police can collect data as and when they want on the public doing absolutely nothing illegal. What do you think about that? I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? It is interesting. It's I wouldn't say ironic, I actually say it's kind of fucked up. It's a step up from ironic. I am angry at the system that keeps robbing away from hardworking people. I'm angry that we don't have a voice. Um, I'm angry because I'm getting poorer each day and they're getting richer. How angry are you about what's transpired in the last week? To be honest, I'm not even surprised. <laughs> okay. So, How common do you think that sense is of not even being surprised? Do you think... The same with most, yeah. most people aren't even surprised. It's too predictable. A lot, of, a lot of people aren't even here today because they're not right. surprised. Yeah. Right. That's a, yeah. So what's the solution? David Cameron resigns. Yeah. David Cameron resigns and then yeah. what? And then hopefully either Jeremy Corbyn or the Green Party become uh, leaders. It's a very interesting crowd, you know. It's um, very young, first and foremost. Uh, but besides the usual suspects, the people you see are not really very politicized. I mean, they are unhappy and they want to change things and they say that as much or they say as much, but they don't have a particular preference. Their, their, their political alliances might change as politicians might change. I think people just want to feel like they, A, they're being heard, B, that there's some sort of democratic process going on and that there isn't this quite clear rule that is one, you know, one rule for the rich and one rule for the poor. It's kind of the, the, this line between rich and poor or, or even, which is the interesting bit here, between the middle middle classes and the, you know, extremely wealthy upper middle classes in this country. The title of the uh, Facebook event was uh, Close Tack Loopholes or Resign Cameron. I think that that wording's wrong and it should have been Cameron resigned first and foremost and then closed tax loopholes, even though they're probably equally as important. When the protest was called today, there were two separate Facebook groups. Um, one to close the tax loopholes and one for Cameron to resign. So we're very, we are confused in ourselves. If he was to resign, that's going to make us, it make it much easier to close the tax loopholes because like, it's it, the, the blame's on him. It's, It'd have a much bigger political impact if he resigned, wi widespread, and, and then people would have to take more seriously the, the, the tax loophole thing. I mean, you're relatively normal people, I presume. You're protecting a malevolent, criminal, animal face fucker. How does that feel? <laughs> what would be sufficient, do you think, to make Cameron resign? What would have to happen? Bigger protests? Yeah, but well, I mean, well, I mean, next week the protest, the, 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 the general protest about homes and, and, and jobs, I mean, that's going to be a lot bigger, I, I presume, because it's been planned for weeks and so many more different people involved. This was organised by a reporter. Yeah. That's quite new, isn't it? Yeah, it's different, isn't it? I mean, I, I was talking to her yesterday. Abby, Abby Wilkinson. Abby Wilkinson, yeah. And she, um, she was saying she just felt outraged by the fact that not only was there a hypocrisy between what David Cameron always put forward as, you know, I'm going to tackle down tax avoidance, and then turns out he's actually a beneficiary from it, um, but also the fact that uh, he himself had intervened with European uh, law that was going to tackle down on trust funds uh, being put in offshores and so on and so forth. I mean, how are you going to approach all the generations, general uh, other demographics, you know, trade unions, students? I mean, I'm sure a lot of people here are students, but are they organized as such? Not really. I think they came with their mates on a Saturday morning. I think in order for David Cameron to feel the fear, the real fear, this needs to be a much more diverse uh, movement that it already is. Big protest today, a couple of thousand people, very young. One of the youngest protests I've seen for a really long time. Really young, right, really young. Late teens, early twenties. What does it change? I don't really know. I think the politics fit are quite split. Cameron resign or close the loopholes. The loopholes aren't going to be changed anytime soon. Even if there was political will to change loopholes, that's a multinational effort. That will take years. So clearly, that's a real get out there for Cameron. So the key takeaway is this, I think. Uh, Channel 4 yesterday contacted every member of the cabinet, asked if they had offshore interests. Um, three replied no, 18 
didn't comment. That would suggest quite a few people were embroiled in the same kind of affairs, tax affairs, as the Prime Minister. Ditto the Chancellor. Whether or not he resigns, this frame of tax justice, offshore tax havens, is going to stay so high up the public agenda and it's going to sully any potential successor to Cameron as well. This is a huge issue. It's not going away anytime soon. The question is, what is an effective politics to counter it? Because it has to be a lot more concrete and a lot more coordinated than this.